All right. Hi again. We're going to talk about what happens if you are assigned to downstream containment on a river rescue. What it means to be in downstream containment, what your job might be, advantages and disadvantages of having uh, downstream containment with swimmers or downstream containment without swimmers, and um, what we can expect and what we should look for when we're down there. Basically, we're going to look at what our job is if we're assigned to downstream containment. So here we have our little swimmer victim. He's being swept downstream. He's approaching maybe some hazards down here. Maybe he's got a dead tree or a strainer or some other hazard. For him, being in the river is a hazard. So we want to be able to get him out as soon as possible. Now, downstream containment is closing the bottom of the box. He fell in upstream somewhere, some, some distance upstream. And based on the river flow and the time of, that he's been in the river, we've decided to put downstream containment down here and wait for him to show up. We want to downstream containment to be far enough downstream where he will not have had time to get by and yet not so far downstream that he drowns before he gets there. So it's a balancing act between needs. Um, so if we show up with, with swimmers, we have a lot of options for downstream containment. Downstream containment does not have to be only a tension diagonal. If you have a swimmer there, you have the option for a live bait for downstream containment. You can, um, the swimmer can go upstream, find the victim, catch the victim, and a river rescuer, uh, a non-wet member, can throw a throw bag to the, uh, to the victim and swimmer and pull them to shore. Um, and you always have the option of throw bag to the victim. That is not necessarily a great thing to do because guess what? You have to rely on the victim to rescue themselves and hang on to that throw bag and know what to do and a lot of things can go sideways on that. If you don't have swimmers, you're limited to two options. You're limited to having a tension diagonal, which is a, which is a rope strung 45 degrees across the river. Um, and to set that up without a swimmer is going to be much more difficult. And again, you're going to have to rely on your victim for assistance to rescue himself with a 45 with a with a tension diagonal if you don't have swimmers the only other option you have if you don't have swimmers is to throw bag to the victim again you are relying on the victim to assist in his own rescue he's cold he's wet they're banged up they might be drunk who knows what, everything that's going on they might be having medical issues so relying on your victim is not the best thing to do to rescue themselves so let's suppose we go with a tension diagonal with swimmers we have the option to, for the swimmer to swim the rope across. We have the option for uh, the swimmer to get part way, do a relay throw across. We have a lot of options with the swimmer to, to set, help set up this, this tension diagonal. A live bait, that's what these guys are set up right here to do. A, a live bait um, with, to rescue this. Here's the swimmer. Here's a non-swimmer but he's holding tension, he's got the rope attached to the, uh, the life vest of the swimmer. The swimmer's gonna run in, grab the victim, and they're gonna, he, as soon as he gets him, he's gonna hold a little bit of tension, maybe, maybe not jerk swimmer out of the water necessarily, but kind of allow the swimmer to come down here and pendulum to the shore and come to a safe place. That's the, that's the life bait. Another option is, Maybe the rescuer has gone upstream, and maybe he's seen the, the swimmer, the victim, come down. He swims out to him, gets hold of him, stabilizes him, gets his head above water, uses the flotation of the PFD to, to uh, stabilize the victim. And the rescuer on shore throws a throw bag to the rescuer and victim. The rescuer grabs the throw bag, keeps hold of the victim, and again, they swing safely into shore in this nice little area that we have right here. So if you've noticed a couple times I've said they swing nicely into shore, one of the critical things about setting up any of these rescues is what's your access like? What are your hazards downstream? 
what's your egress going to be like. You want to take all of these things in consideration. If you, if you went to this side, perhaps, maybe there's a lot of brush in the way. Maybe there's a lot of obstacles that are going to get in the way of, of rope management and those kinds of things. So you, you want something open. You want preferably would let, maybe have a little eddy in this spot where you would have a safe egress. Maybe there's a, a river path right here that would allow you the option to, to safely get him out and have a place to work him. Now, if you set him up here and you do the same thing and you pendulum down, down river, you don't want to be above a strainer or some other river hazard that's in the river. You have to look downstream and see what exactly is there and where you're going to get them out, what you're going to do with the victim after you get them out. Um, dead trees are a terrible place to put rescuers, to put swimmers, uh, anything like that. Again, if you're thrown to a throw bag with a victim, uh, two of the victim, you know, you would use the same principles, but they may not be able to hang on. They might, any number of things. And then, guess what? You're chasing a victim downstream. If you have downstream containment, the victim should not be able to get downstream from you. That's important. If he does get downstream of you, you have to move your entire rescue operation and reset it using the same principles that you set up with the first one. So it's really, really important that the victim doesn't get past your downstream containment. So you've got some time. You set up your whichever, whichever one you want to use. You set up a, a tension diagonal, let's say, and you're waiting there. You don't necessarily have to wait there the entire time until the end of the incident. After that, you can send up river, uh, you can set up a search up river using bank walkers to to make a search look for the guy maybe maybe he's right around the corner and he managed to get to shore and he's just laying there gasping for breath having a heart attack or something or whatever you don't know so if he hasn't arrived down here yet leave somebody down here obviously to watch the river for him but start sending up bank walkers up the river to do a riverbank search uh, you're going you're gonna to shorten the time. There'll be a search coming from above. There's going to be a search coming from below with riverbank walkers. That's the best way to close that box and narrow that box up and take the time, uh, shorten the time to actually find your victim and rescue him. So I want to say thanks for listening, and I look forward to training with you and implementing all of these things later on this month.